Here's an example using exponential random variables. We have two machines, m sub x and m sub y, times the failure are exponentially distributed. So we have two random variables. We'll assume they're independent and that they're exponentially distributed with rates lambda sub x and lambda sub y. We want to find three things. First, the probability that m sub x fails before m sub y, then the expected time of the first failure, and the expected time of the second failure. Now, to review exponential random variables, we'll call our random variable x with rate lambda, which is a positive number. To be exponential means that we have a cumulative distribution function given as follows. So if capital F sub x evaluated at t equal to 1 minus e to the minus lambda t, where t is greater than or equal to 0. So this is just the probability that our random variable x is less than or equal to t. For a graph of capital F sub x, okay, we have this here. Now, associated to the CDF is the probability density function, or PDF. This is just going to be given by f sub x evaluated t equal to lambda e to the minus lambda t. Okay, the picture is given here. Now, the connection, if I want to go from the CDF to the PDF, we just take the derivative. To go in the other direction, we're going to take the PDF, and then we're going to take the definite integral from 0 to t over our PDF. And that gives us our CDF. So we'll need that for what follows. For the first part, I want to find the probability that m sub x fails before m sub y. In terms of random variables, that's just given by the probability of the event x less than y. Now, how do we find that? We have two random variables, so we're going to need a joint PDF. We're going to find the region of the plane defined by this event, and we integrate our joint PDF over that region. Now, because x and y are independent, the joint PDF is just the product of the PDFs for x and y, and we have them from the previous board. For our region, okay, we know x and y, since we're exponential, we're always positive or equal to zero. So the region the plane has points x, y with x and y greater than or equal to zero. So we're in the first quadrant. Now, for all x, y with x less than y, okay, the boundary is going to be the line y equals x. And if we check one point, say 1 comma 2, we're using this upper region here. So if I'm going to integrate our joint PDF over that region, I'm going to need a double integral. So we have to find the limits that go with this region here. If we fix an x, okay, so our inside integral is going to be integrated in y. The range of y that we use, we start at y equals x, go to y equals infinity. So those are the inside limits. For the outside limits, we project down to the x-axis. The x that we use go from 0 to infinity, so those will be the outside limits. We substitute everything in, and this is the integral that we're looking for. Now, if we integrate the inside integral, we can ignore this part because there's no y in it. This is just going to go to our CDF for y. We evaluate at x and infinity, take the difference, and we get e to the minus lambda yx. Now, if I multiply this by this term here, we can add the exponents, giving us this single variable integral. And that's going to go to lambda x over lambda x plus lambda y, and that's our answer. Now, check. Note, if lambda x is equal to lambda y, okay, it's equally likely that x or y go first. So the probability is a half, and that's what we get. Otherwise, Okay, when we check the probabilities, if I have a higher failure rate, that's more likely that I fail first. And that's going to check out also. As an alternative method, we condition on the values of x. If we were working with discrete random variables, then I could consider 
each value that x takes, that gives us a conditional probability. We weight that with probability of that value occurring, and then take the sum. Because we're working with continuous random variables, we change as follows. The sum becomes an integral. Probability that we're weighting with becomes a probability density function. So we just need to work on this part here. Now, that's just going to be a probability that y is greater than t. And we know from the first board that'll be equal to e to the minus lambda y t. If we switch from variable t to variable x, we have this integral here, which is from the previous board. So we get the same answer. That gives us another way to think of the problem. Now, for the second part, we want to know the expected time of the first failure. So what we're looking for here is the mean of the random variable given by the minimum of x and y. To get that, we describe the minimum of x and y completely. So that's going to be another exponential random variable with rate lambda x plus lambda y. Now, to see that, instead of considering the CDF, we're going to use the greater than sign. So this is going to be 1 minus our CDF. So what happens here? Well, to have the minimum of x and y greater than t, both x and y have to be greater than t. And because we're independent, we could take this probability and write it as a product. Now, each of these we get from board one. So we're going to have 1 minus the CDF equal to something that's exponential. So the CDF is in the form of an exponential random variable. So that describes this random variable min xy. To get the mean, well, what's the mean of? an exponential random variable, we just take one over the rate. So in this case, okay, our expected time to the first failure is one over lambda x plus lambda y. As an alternative method, we can integrate. Now, the minimum of x and y is equal to x when x is less than y, or y when x is greater than y. So our picture looks like this. It's x on this region, y on this region. For the expected value, we use the same procedure as before, except now, when I'm on this region, we're going to put in an x. When I'm in this region, we're going to put in a y. So we'll need two double integrals where before we had one. I'll leave it to you to work this out and verify our previous answer. For the last part, okay, we want the expected time to the second failure. So this is going to be the maximum of x and y. Clever way to get out of this, I note the maximum of x and y is equal to x plus y minus the minimum of x and y. Okay, so note if x is greater, then this minimum is equal to y and they cancel. If y is greater, then the minimum is x and the x is cancel. So if I want the expected value, I just take the expected value of each term. That's going to work out to. Okay, so we have 1 over lambda x plus 1 over lambda y, and we just saw this expected value is going to be 1 over lambda x plus lambda y. So that gets us to our answer. Now, if we want an alternative method, we just use the same one as over here, except now we're working with the picture where I have y on this region and x on this region. 